Welcome everyone. My name is Corinne and I will be your moderator this evening. I'm excited to welcome Chloe Hironaka, Sales Coordinator for Unitas PPO Solutions as our speaker tonight for three ways your practice can increase PPO reimbursements through little known PPO optimization tactics. Before we get started, I would like to take a moment to go over some housekeeping. If you have a question, please type it in the box labeled have a question located on the right side of your screen and we will answer those live at the end. This webinar is sponsored by Unitas and CE is not available for this webinar live or on demand. Chloe, welcome. Thank you so much for being with us tonight. I'll pass it on over to you now. All righty. Thank you so much, Corinne, for the introduction. Welcome, everybody. Thank you so much for joining our webinar this evening. I'm super excited to talk to you about PPO optimization and how you can increase your PPO reimbursements and per patient profit. So let's jump into it. Um, again, my name is Chloe Hironaka, and I am one of the sales and marketing coordinators here at Unitas Dental. And I am more than happy to answer any questions that you have. So take down my name and my contact information, and I'm gonna save some time here at the end to do Q&A. So like Corinne said, feel free as we go along here to drop your questions in the box in the right-hand corner, and I will try to get as many of those answered for you as I can. If there's any that I do not get to, um, please feel free to reach out and email me directly and I'd be more than happy to assist and get those answered for you. Um, so just some quick background on our company. If you aren't familiar, we are Unitas Dental and we are a PPO negotiations, PPO management company. We've been doing this since 2011. So for about the past 11, 10 years, we've been in this industry. We've worked with thousands of practices all across the United States. We have had clients in every single state. We currently represent over 1,400 active clients clients, 1,400 practices, and we are based out of Arizona. So um, we have been, um, you know, based out of here, we have over 100 PPO consultants on our team. Um, so lots of experience doing this and implementing this framework. And so I'm so excited to be sharing it with you. And I almost feel like we're giving away like our secret recipe, the secret sauce, but the fact of the matter is, as much as we would love to represent every single dental practice, um, that's just not possible right now. And so I always use the expression, you know, a rising tide raises all ships. And so the more practices I tell offices every single day, the more providers that are reaching out, to negotiate their fees and work with these insurance companies, the better, the more likely they are to continue coming to the table to negotiate and increase those reimbursements. So we're gonna be covering some key things today of how you can, again, increase your per profit patient um, and how you can increase those reimbursements. So we're gonna talk about how your UCRs may be impeding your PPO patient profit, we're going to be talking about what PPO negotiation options you currently have and some exciting advancements in the industry and ways that you can really take it to the next level and optimize your participation and reimbursements. So before I get into all the good stuff or go any further, um, I'd like you to take your phone and scan this QR code or you can open up another tab on your computer and go to www.ppoguide.com. Again, that's ppoguide.com. Um, it's basically our PPO negotiation quick start guide. So it's gonna be super, super helpful um, as I'm going through all of this with you. Um, definitely, again, take notes, ask questions, but um, this will help you follow along and can help you recap all the information that I cover. So scan that QR code, go to ppoguide.com and uh, follow along with that PPO negotiation quick start guide. Alrighty, so the first thing that I want to dive into is how you can understand your PPO participation and current reimbursements. Um, so we're gonna, there's some key things you need to do here in order to do that. We're gonna talk about how you can discover and map out your PPO participation. 
We're going to talk about how you receive and document your actual fee schedule reimbursements. And we're going to talk about comparing and repairing UCR versus reimbursement discrepancies. So um, those are going to be kind of the main topics we hit here. But first and foremost, before you can start negotiating, you got to understand what your current status is or what your current PPO situation is. Just like an x-ray with the patient, right? You have to have that full picture in order to prescribe and know what the next steps are. So to do that, you got to understand who you're in network with and more importantly, how. Um, you know, and I know this gets hard to keep track of. And so here's the way that you can do it. So there's really three different ways that you can be considered an in-network participating provider. You can be directly contracted. You can be leased through another PPO. We call that PPO to PPO leasing. Or you can be participating through what's called an umbrella network or a TPA company, if you've heard that term before. I'm going to go into a lot more detail on each of these different participation types and explain to you why they determine your reimbursement so much, why they're important to understand next here. Um, but for now, just note that those are the three different ways you can participate and what you need to verify with each insurance company. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to contact provider relations. If you don't know, if you really have no idea with who you're in network with, then I would recommend reaching out to all the major national PPO companies and starting there, okay? If you do know who you're in network with or have an idea, great, start with those companies. So you're gonna contact provider relations and you're gonna wanna confirm the participation for each doctor at your practice, each provider, and be specific for each location. So if you're a multi-location practice, even if you're the same tax ID number, it is possible to have varying participation between each location. So you want to be specific on the location that you're asking on. And same thing for the providers, especially if you're a multi-provider practice, it's very common for the providers to have been contracted at different times or by different people. So you want to make sure that um, you're verifying for each one because there's probably going to be some variances there. So, um, Basically, you're going to contact each insurance company and a little sneak peek here because you may be thinking, oh my gosh, I don't want to be digging up all those provider relations contact numbers. Um, so as a little bonus for being on this webinar, we're actually going to be providing you a provider relations contact list so that you will have all these numbers for your reference as just a sheet you can keep handy and use uh, you know, to your benefit to help with whatever you need and to start with this process. So we're going to give you that. Um, and then the other thing you're going to want to have prepared before you actually start calling the insurance companies is a spreadsheet. You can use Excel, Google Sheets to basically track the information that you're collecting. So what I would recommend is in the first column of the spreadsheet, you're going to list out in each row each insurance company that you're contacting. Okay, And then from each additional column, you're going to list out for each provider. So um, have all your insurances listed out in the first column, second, just the provider's name at the top, and then you can just add as many columns as you need for each provider or each location. Um, and then that way you can just go through that list and as you call, check it off and write, okay, are they direct? Are they through another company? If they're through another company, what company are they through? And they, you can put their effective date. So now speaking to that, so you're gonna call and you're gonna say, hi, I'd like to verify how my doctor is in network or how they're participating with you, okay? Again, a lot of times when you call these insurances and you know, um, I know all you office managers that do this all day long, they'll just say, oh yeah, you're in network. Okay, that's not going to be a sufficient answer or what we're really looking for here. Again, you got to verify, is it with your company directly, meaning you're, we're using your fee schedule, or is it through another company? And if so, which one? And they will tell you which company. If they say, yes, you're directly contracted, then you're going to want to verify your effective date. So um, you can simply ask, okay, can you please provide me with the effective date i.e. when we became directly contracted. Um, so we're going to want to verify that. And then you're going to want to check for your current fee schedule. 
So um, you're going to ask them for a copy of that, and they may email or fax that to you um, to send that over. If you are not directly contracted, if you're through another insurance, then you're going to want to just note that down, say thank you, and then you're going to note that you need to contact that insurance company to get your effective date and current fee schedule. Okay, so um, to kind of, like I said, go into some more detail on those different participation types and why those are so crucial to understand here um, or why they affect your reimbursement. So you can be directly contracted with an insurance type or with an insurance company. Okay, that's going to be the most straightforward basic relationship I'm sure most of you are familiar with. Okay, so that's when you would have directly contracted um, credentialed with this insurance company. And then um, when those patients come into your practice, you're considered a network, you treat them, you submit the claim to that insurance company and are reimbursed on their contracted fee schedule. Okay. What's important to remember is whenever you are directly contracted with an insurance company, if you have a direct contract in place, you are going to be reimbursed on that company's fee schedule. Okay. A direct contract trumps any other relationship. And that's going to make sense here in just a second. Um, with the second participation type, the PPO to PPO leasing, this is where a lot of confusion tends to happen. Some practices notice that, that this is happening um, and they're like, oh my gosh, I don't know what's going on. Um, but it can get confusing to track because these relationships are always happening and changing, but it's very common in the industry today. So essentially what has happened is a lot of PPO insurances have partnered with one another. So they basically agree to lease out any of their providers that are directly contracted with them to the insurances that they've partnered with. So essentially any provider that would have contracted with this orange PPO insurance company, we can say, for example, this is Aetna. Um, Aetna automatically leases their providers out to several companies. Actually, they'll lease you out to Guardian, Principal, Emeritus, Sun Life Assurance. So basically through that one Aetna contract, you could technically be in network with all these other insurances. But again, when you are reimbursed, you're going to be contract. You're going to be paid on your direct contract. So when you submit that um, claim to that insurance company, they're going to shoot it back to Aetna or whatever company you're seeing through. That's the fee schedule you're going to utilize. So um, this is again very common um, between a lot of PPOs. The last participation type is going to be the umbrella networking. So basically, this is going to be, um, you know, there's really four major umbrella networks. It's basically the same concept that I just explained with the PPO to PPO leasing. These companies are set up differently than the regular PPO insurance. Um, they're meant to basically recruit a lot of providers. So the four major umbrella networks you may be familiar with are going to be Connection, Denimax, Carrington and the Zealous Mavericks Network. So through any of these umbrella networks, the reason they're called an umbrella, you can probably guess and see from the visual here, is because they're going to lease you out to several PPO insurance companies. So um, through any of those umbrellas, if you contract with them, again, you're going to get paid on that umbrella's fee schedule. Now, where a lot of the confusion happens and what ultimately tends to hurt a lot of providers is the insurance companies essentially have their own hierarchy, okay? They're always going to try to default you to the lowest possible fee schedule based upon how you as the provider are contracted. So because there's so many of these relationships between the insurance companies is basically like this huge web. Um, a lot of times providers are technically over contracted, um, meaning the same companies are picking up the same insurances. So what how the insurances handle it is they're going to see, OK, let's say as a provider, you have a direct contract with Aetna, but you also have a direct contract with Connection. Guardian, you don't have a direct contract with. It could go through either one, Aetna or Connection who pays lower, let's say hypothetically Aetna, that's who they're gonna default you to. Unless you go in and manually fix that, which that's something that our company specializes in. We call the optimization. I'm gonna talk about that here in a little bit um, towards the end. But um, but that's why these relationships are, are so key. And again, it's determining which fee schedule you're actually using. So that's gonna tell you who you actually need 
to reach out to negotiate with what needs to be fixed there. Okay. So with receiving and documenting your actual fee reimbursements, I can't emphasize this enough. If you're going to go through the effort of going through this process, please make sure that you have your current fee schedules on file um, because you're going to be using those to do your comparisons between what they're, you know, negotiating with you and where you're currently at. So um, you can get your current fee schedule by, again, as you're verifying your participation, um, you can have them email or fax it to you. You can email them and um, they'll, they'll send it to you. Or for a lot of companies now, they utilize the provider relations portal. And so you can simply log on and then just download it right away automatically from your portal. They keep it up to date on there. So, um, and then of course, update your Dentrix or practice management software that you use with your current fee schedules. So very important to keep that, that um, data accurate, especially before you're going through this process. Um, the next thing that we're going to want to look at is comparing and repairing your UCR versus reimbursement discrepancies. So um, what you're gonna wanna do here is you're gonna wanna utilize another spreadsheet. You're gonna be an Excel master by the end of all this. Um, no, just kidding, it's pretty easy. Um, but you're gonna wanna enter all of your fee schedules into a spreadsheet. Now, that might sound overwhelming, so if you don't wanna do it for all of your procedure codes, I totally understand. If you're a specialist, I would, but for general practitioners, focus on your top 20, the 35 UCRs. And um, we'll, we'll talk about how you can determine those in a minute here. But basically in your first column, you're gonna list out um, your, um, the procedure codes. And then I would list out what your UCRs are, or your office fees are on those specific codes or procedures. And then in each additional column, the name of the insurance, and then fill in their matching reimbursements for each of those procedures, okay? Hopefully I was able to kind of picture, paint a picture of that for you um, with my hand motions, but um, you're gonna wanna um, look at these all side by side because you're gonna wanna increase your UCRs where necessary. No UCR should be at or below your highest reimbursing PPO fee schedule. So I get this all the time from talking with doctors and offices. Um, you know, a lot of PPO heavy practices don't increase their UCRs annually or on a very regular basis because they feel like, oh, I'm treating so many PPO patients, I'm never getting that UCR fee anyways. It makes no difference if I increase that or not. Okay, so I will agree with you that maybe increasing that might not make the biggest impact on your revenue because you're so PPO heavy. That's why we have PPO negotiations, right? But it is important to keep that UCR updated and competitive with your market because um, the insurance companies, we have seen a correlation between what they're willing to negotiate and reimburse you and what your procedures are priced at. So um, a high UCR fee can correlate with high reimbursement rates. You don't want to be getting paid less than the doctor down the street from you just because you're priced way lower So or haven't updated in a long time. So you definitely, if they see that your fee is at or higher than your, um, the UCR or what they're reimbursing you, um, you're, they're not going to increase it. So we're going to want to look at that. I recommend that you utilize a percentile based analysis tool. For our clients, we utilize Henry Shine's um, tool that you can purchase as well. If, if you're a client with us, we, we provide it to you. But um, I, I would recommend using a tool like that um, to, again, do the analysis for your specific area to make sure that you are competitive. The last thing I will say on this note, and again, Hopefully you're all already doing this, but if you're submitting the claims, um, make sure that you are putting your actual office fee or UCR on the claim. You're not matching what the insurance is paying you. Because again, same thing, if they think that you're reimbursed, that you are charging the same amount of what they're reimbursing, they're gonna think your reimbursement's amazing, right? So you need to be showing that discrepancy. And then obviously the goal is to bridge that gap as much as we can with negotiations and optimization. So again, that is basically the step-by-step -step process for 
just analyzing your current situation, PPO wise, um, and getting all the information ready to negotiate. So again, for anyone that maybe hopped on here late and didn't hear this in the beginning, please, if you haven't already, head on over to ppoguide.com or scan this QR code. It'll lead you directly there. Get our PPO negotiation quick start guide. And that way we can, you can um, have all the information I'm covering easily accessible. And um, as we go through this, you can um, continue to, uh, to reference that and write down any notes that you have. Um, okay, so we're going to be talking about top PPO negotiation tactics. All right. So um, with PPO negotiation tactics, we're going to be covering how you can ensure you don't waste time on the wrong procedures. We're going to talk about how you can approach the PPO negotiation process. And we're going to talk about how you can compare offers received from the PPO insurances. So um, ensuring you don't waste time on the wrong procedures. So um, what we want to look at here is, um, like I mentioned earlier, um, when you're ranking all of your current fee schedules, you want to make sure that you're kind of focusing on the top 20 to 35 procedures for your practice. So how you can do that is you can actually run a report on your practice management software um, that'll show you your annual production summary. So you're going to want to ensure the report is listed by procedure code, quantity, and production. Okay. If you don't know how to run this report, this might sound intuitive, but I would literally just Google, or you can always, of course, contact your practice management software and they should be able to help you. But for a lot of these, if you just do a quick Google, it'll pull it up right away for you um, of how to run this report. So run this report, that'll pull in your production summary, and then that way you can rank it and sort it by your highest grossing production to determine what your top 20 to 35 procedures are. Um, and again, you can use this in the previous step um, when you're comparing your different fee schedules um, or your, your current um, fees and then when we're also comparing offers. So getting these top 20 to 35 is gonna be pretty crucial. Also to prepare you a lot of times when you're negotiating with companies, they will ask to see your top codes specifically. <laughs> um, they'll wanna take a look at those. Um, so now with talking about approaching the PPO negotiation process. So um, most PPOs are going to be considering negotiations every two to three years. So you're eligible to negotiate every two years from the time that you are originally contracted or from the time you last negotiated. So keep that in mind. Some of your PPOs might be on different cycles. That's okay. Um, just track it and make sure that you're reaching out um, during those time periods. Um, so what you're going to wanna do is you're gonna wanna reach out to provider relations. You can use that contact list we're gonna provide you with, um, and you're gonna request a fee schedule increase. So you might wanna start just by calling if you can get in touch with a local representative, get their email, phone, that's gonna be great. Um, but you basically say that you would like to request a fee schedule increase or a fee review, and then they'll be able to help you out from there um, and direct you with the next steps. Um, but again, make sure that you're paying attention so that you're not wasting time um, to your PPO participation that we just laid out and pay attention to those leasing arrangements. Only reach out to request negotiations um, from the main pair payer. So for example, if you're in network with Guardian, but you're paid on Aetna's contracted fees, you're going to be reaching out to Aetna in order to actually increase your fee schedule. If you call Guardian to say you want a fee increase, they're gonna be like, uh, you, you're not directly contracted with us, we don't have a fee schedule from you. Um, so make sure that you're, you're paying close attention to that. That's why we have you map that out first. Um, once you ha are starting to collect those different offers and fee negotiations, you're of course gonna wanna compare the offers, okay? Um, all too often, I sometimes hear from offices that they receive a new fee schedule, they assume it's an increase, they sign off on it, get it accepted. Little do they know, they just accepted an actual decrease to their office. Sometimes the insurances will try to be tricky like that. 
That's why, again, focusing on those top 20 to 35 procedure codes is so crucial because that have the highest quantity and production revenue. Because in reality, you know, depending on how frequent you're doing a procedure, a hundred dollar increase on some random procedure you're never doing could be outweighed by a $5 decrease on something you're doing all the time. So again, we wanna see the increases on those top 20 to 35 codes. We don't wanna see them decreasing stuff there. Um, so what I would do is, again, in your spreadsheet, you're going to list out procedure code in first column, UCR, or what your office fee is in the next column, what your office is currently being reimbursed from that insurance company, and then in the final column, what they're willing to reimburse you, what the negotiated fee schedule is. And then I lied, one last column, you could show the difference between the two fee schedules so you can see the dollar gain, or again, if there happen to be any decreases, you can clearly see that. So you're gonna wanna be doing those side-by-side -side comparisons on those top procedure codes. Um, once you have verified that, the offer looks good, um, you wanna accept, um, for every company, it's a little different. Sometimes they'll have you sign off on the fee schedule, send it back. Sometimes you just notify the rep that you're accepting. Um, but for most uh, fee increases, it's going to take between 30 to 90 days for them to go into effect. Um, so that's something that we're going to be, to be looking at there. Um, the next thing we're going to be talking about is how to truly maximize your negotiation opportunities. And this is where our company really comes in. Um, you know, I really have given you the step-by-step -step framework that we literally follow for every single one of our clients. And for, at this point, thousands of doctors across the United States, we know that it works. So I'm very confident that if you take this information that I've provided with you, you follow the steps, follow this framework, I am confident that you can successfully negotiate and see increases on your reimbursements. Um, but what's really going to help you get to the next level and make sure you're maximizing all opportunities available is to partner with a PPO expert like our company, Unitis, to look at the further opportunities available. So, um, you know, we can really ensure that your PPOs are actually, you know, competitive for your area. We can minimize the optimization optimization risks and maximize the benefits. And I'm gonna talk about how you can calculate re your return on investment from PPO negotiations. So there's a couple of reasons of why, again, you know, going through this negotiation process, you can definitely get it started on your own. We want you to try out this framework. And again, I'm confident that it can work with you for you if you follow these steps. Um, there are some benefits to also having us negotiate on your behalf. One of those is ensuring that your fee schedule is competitive. Really the only way you can do that, because obviously you can't fee share, is to partner with someone like us that has all of the data to see what companies really are offering and have seen all of those thousands of fee schedules to know if it really is a good offer. You don't wanna get locked into a low fee schedule. Um, Again, most new fee schedules you're going to be locked into for a minimum of two years before they're gonna consider you eligible to renegotiate. So we're gonna be able to look at that for you. We're also going to have um, the data to compare your offers in the area. You're, specifically, we're gonna have specific insurance company contacts that we work with from each insurance company, specific representatives that, to be honest, a lot of practices don't have access to. Like I said, it's ideal to work kind of one-on-one -on -one with a rep. Sometimes that's hard to do. So we've really, um, you know, used our business practices and leverage as um, representing doctors um, to get our foot in the door and establish a really great working relationship with these companies and are able to negotiate on your behalf. Um, that's the other thing, it's gonna save you a lot Lots of time because we are able to negotiate and we have a highly trained team with years of experience and a proven track record of, of doing this and uh, successfully negotiating optimizing providers contracts. So with talking about optimization, so you've been hearing me say that word. Um, so optimization is the alternative route or an additional route to negotiations that you can receive 
increases. In fact, it really is where a lot of providers do see a big jump in their reimbursement. So like I explained when I went through those different ways you can technically be considered a network provider, right? If you can be direct, you can be through another PPO, or you can be through an umbrella network. There's multiple paths to participation. So we can actually shift how you're currently contracted so that you can utilize higher fee schedules from different companies, but still be considered a network provider. Um, and so it really can open up all these other avenues. If you're stuck under, you know, again, just using this example, if you're getting all these PPOs picked up through Aetna or through Cigna and you're like, oh my gosh, this fee schedule, you know, they've negotiated with us, but it's still not great. But then it's like, oh my gosh, this company over here is paying this amount and it's way higher we could potentially shift those contracts over to utilize that fee schedule. Um, obviously, it's a very, it's a time consuming process. It can be a little bit risky um, because those relationships are so complicated and they're ever changing. There are certain caveats involved as far as what plans really will get picked up through a network, which ones won't, you know, things are linked together. So I would never recommend an office do this on their own. That's why as much as I'd like to, it's not like negotiations where I can really give you like a step-by-step -step framework um, or recipe to follow to do optimization. It's pretty circumstantial and every situation is different, which again, at this point, we've pretty much seen it all. And so I really would leave this part kind of up to the experts um, to make sure that you're, you're really minimizing those risks. But when done successfully, um, it really, really can benefit your practice. So um, that's something Something that we can look into for you again just to kind of review what that looks like for optimization as we're negotiating your direct contracts um, with these companies we're also going to reach out to negotiate fee proposals um, so we reach out and basically say hey you know this doctor is currently directly contracted with with you through this company orange insurance if they were to become directly contracted with you instead what's the highest fee schedule you'd be willing to pay and so that way we're able to have all offers on the table and then because we know all these different paths to participation all the interrelationships between the insurance companies we can give you those recommendations and then implement those changes to your practice um, so that's really how again you're going to maximize your reimbursements to make sure that you are set up your contracting is done the most efficient way possible. So for over 10 years, we've implemented this plan and framework for thousands of doctors. And um, it's something that really, really the optimization sets us apart from really any other PPO negotiation company in the industry. And again, from offices doing this on their own. Um, and so this has really helped us pioneer that representation for, for doctors. Um, the last thing I kind of want to touch on here is how we can actually project your return on investment um, or your ROI um, through going through the negotiation and optimization process for your practice. I know it requires some work on your end, but the results can can be really, really amazing and can really, again, it's increasing your revenue without cutting costs, without increasing your fees, or without treating any additional patients. I mean, who wouldn't want that, right? That's like the dream, the dream scenario. This is really money sitting on the table that should be going into your practice. We just got to clean a few things up here so that we can take advantage of it. Um, so a projection that you can kind of run. So from our data of doing this, um, a, a office that goes through the negotiation and optimization process, on average, will see at least a 10% increase across the board on their reimbursements. Above average is going to be about 18% or above. Below is going to be in the 4% range. So um, those are kind of the percentages you, you can keep in mind for 10, 18 percent. Um, and then a way that you can really quickly project your annual revenue increase to the practice. So a little bit more interesting here is if you take your annual production before write offs. So if we say that it's a million dollars, OK, um, for the year, but just put in your, your annual production. And then you take your percentage of patients under negotiable PPOs. Now, the reason I say negotiable PPOs is because I do recommend that you um, 
eliminate Delta from this estimation just because, and I know I get asked this all the time, a lot of doctors know this, Delta historically does not negotiate. It's pretty rare to ever see them deviate from their standard zip coded fee schedules. And so because of that, they also don't optimize, meaning they don't partner with any other companies. You have to be directly contracted with Delta in order to be in network with them. So really the only thing that you can really look at for Delta to sometimes help the situation is if you're eligible to be a premier only provider versus being a PPO and premier provider, which is kind of the default now. Um, for every state, the regulations on that are different. For most states, you have to have been a certain provider or in network for a certain amount of time. But anyways, um, we don't expect a lot of change. I wouldn't expect a lot of change from Delta. And so in that case, I would exclude them. That's why we say negotiable PPO. So if you're like an 80 to 90% PPO driven practice, but like 20, 30% or 30 to 40% of your patients are PPO, that's gonna bring you down to essentially a 50% PPO patient base. Okay. So take whatever your PPO patient base is, subtract the percentage that's Delta. That's going to be the percent you use. If you really have no idea, but you know, you're in network with a lot of PPOs, you're pretty PPO heavy. I would use 50%. Just use that as a, it'll be, if anything, a pretty conservative estimate. Um, multiply that against that annual production. That will give you your negotiable production, which in this case would be $500,000. So $500,000, um, we're going to multiply that by this scale here. Um, so if you you were to increase just that 10% average, that'd be a $50,000 annual revenue increase to your practice. If you were to increase in that 18% range, that's going to be a $90,000 annual revenue increase to the practice. And even in the 4% range, I mean, in this situation, that would be a $20,000 annual revenue increase to your practice. Again, without treating any additional patients or, you know, cutting costs, it's a direct ROI. This is directly affecting your revenue. Um, and even just really quick back on the Delta thing, you know, all too often I will see practices. Obviously, I know Delta is a major player, right? Most practices, even when they're fee for service, the one they have is Delta. Um, Delta is a major player that doesn't at this time currently negotiate. Um, it's always worth attempting negotiations with them because the more providers that push, again, the more likely they are to come to the table. But if you're a network with other PPOs, still negotiate and do something with those other PPOs. All too often I see providers that they're like, oh, I'm pretty much, you know, like I'm 60% Delta. Um, but then I'm like, but you're in network with like 20 to 30%, you know, 20 to 30% of your other patients are PPO. That still could mean a lot of additional revenue to your practice. So don't don't let that discourage you from, from doing something with your PPOs. Negotiate what you can, get the money back that you can. Um, so anyways, that's kind of the projections there you can run. Um, I did just want to share some results with you so just that you can just see that this is a reality. This is a real legitimate thing that can be a reality for your practice. We worked with Dr. Morgan in North Carolina. They had five negotiated PPO contracts, two PPO optimizations, and they received a $64,000 annual revenue increase for their practice. Um, the results for Dr. Baker in Texas, they had five negotiated con uh, PPO contracts and three PPO optimizations. They were looking at a $79,000 annual revenue increase. Um, and for Dr. Young in Florida, they had seven negotiated PPO contracts for PPO optimizations, and they saw a $100,000 annual revenue increase to their practice. So um, really, really good results here. Again, this can be a reality for your practice. Um, you can negotiate with these PPOs and increase those reimbursements, and we can optimize and really get you to, to a better PPO position. Um, so again, just to recap everything that we've covered today, um, we have three key strategies to increasing PPO reimbursements. Um, so you're going to want to first understand your PPO participation and current reimbursements. Okay. We do that by discovering and documenting your PPO participation status with each company and collecting your current fee schedules. That's where you're going to start. Then you're going to tactfully approach negotiations. Don't waste time on the wrong procedures. 
have those top codes ready to go. If you're a general practitioner, if you're a specialist, go for it, go for them all. Um, have those procedures ready to go and know what companies you need to call, who you need to contact. And then you're gonna wanna maximize your negotiation and optimization opportunities by partnering with us, Unitas Dental, the PPO experts to evaluate any additional opportunities you have to really maximize your in-network participation. So I'm sure you're probably feeling a bit like this right now, right? Information overload. I know this is a lot, um, a lot we covered in a pretty short amount of time, but hopefully again, it was a lot of good information for you. You have that PPO guide for your reference. Here's your last chance to scan that code or jot down that website, www.ppoguide.com. Um, use this PPO negotiation quick start guide to reference what we've talked about today. Um, now, what's gonna happen after you hop off this webinar, right? Depending on where you're at, you might be off to dinner, you might go right back to treating your patients or scheduling your appointments, calling your insurance companies. Um, I get it, you're busy. Um, but don't let this 40 minutes that have passed go to waste, okay? You've taken the time, you've gotten on this webinar, just by being on this webinar, that's shown that you're obviously interested in increasing your reimbursements. You understand that it's a problem, you know that it affects your overall revenue for your practice, maybe very largely. So, so don't let this time to waste. You've now gotten a lot of great information. Your practice needs higher PPO reimbursements now, right? These reimbursements, they're not gonna increase on their own. And every PPO patient that you treat, you could potentially be losing money the more time you let pass. So if it's okay with you, I would like to make you an offer that could potentially help you implement everything that we've learned today a little bit a little bit faster okay so um, I'd like you all today to go right now another QR code for you to scan or open another tab it's www.ppoguide.com slash go so you're just gonna add that slot forward slash go um, and schedule a free PPO consultation with us it's gonna take you to our lovely um, consultation calendar here you can simply pick a date and time that works best for you we're typically available for consultations anytime Monday through Friday, um, 7 a.m. to 5 p.m. Mountain Standard Time. So we can fit you in. If you're if you're not seeing a time slot that works for you, send me an email um, and I can I can get you in there. But you should be able to find something available on there. So hop on right now, scan that QR code, or go to ppoguide.com forward slash go and pick a date and time that works for you. We're gonna give you a free 30 minute phone consultation for you to meet with one of our PPO experts so that we can further chat about what you've learned today and what your additional opportunities may be for your practice specifically. We're gonna review, you know, talk about what PPO insurances you're currently with, which ones you're maybe having some struggles with, and then we're gonna calculate your potential ROI from working with us and um, identify you know, which of our services you're best suited for and, and what your opportunities are. So it's a totally free consultation. If what you've learned today has sparked an interest, you're excited, you wanna continue this conversation, please go and schedule a consultation. We would love to chat with you. There's no commitment, it's just a free consultation call, okay? Plus, if you have a consultation with us, in addition to attending this webinar, we have these three awesome limited time bonuses that are exclusive, again, to you attending this webinar and attending a consultation with us. So you're first going to get that PPO Provider Relations Master List that I mentioned earlier. Um, we make hundreds of phone calls to PPO insurances every month, multiple every single day. And so we have that master contact list and I'm sure you want it. I mean, this is going to save you hours of sitting on hold because you've called the wrong number. There is nothing worse. We all, we've all been there where you're sitting on hold waiting. You finally get someone and then they redirect you or they say, yeah, wrong place. And then you're stuck sitting on hold for another 20 minutes, if you're lucky, if anything, it might be longer. So um, this is gonna save you lots of time. It's gonna get you directly to the source. Um, it's gonna help you verify all that PPO participation and get those current fee schedules. So print this out, 
paste it to your wall, keep it handy. This is a $199 value that we're giving you to you completely free. Plus again, hours of your time sitting on hold. Um, the next awesome bonus that we have for you is our e-guide. So it's our e-guide to the 35 common insurance problems and how to avoid them. So as we've been in this industry for the past 10 years, we've, like I said, worked with a lot of doctors. We've worked with a lot of insurance companies. So we know the current problems and questions that you have. So over the past 10 years, we've worked to compile all of our top PPO solutions or answers to the most commonly questions that we get every single day. So this book is gonna contain information from downcoding to balance billing, out of network benefits, info changes if you're going through a tax ID change, a business name change, ownership change, um, key steps to adding an associate to PPO plans, plus many, many more. Um, so this is, again, going to save you hours of trying to solve these frustrating PPO-related problems. A lot of these questions, you know, sometimes it's hard to even know who you ask. So um, this is a $299 value that you're going to get completely free. So um, this awesome e-guide. Um, finally, you're also going to get our fee schedule analysis tools. So this is one that I'm super excited about. I know I, I joked about you becoming a Excel whiz by the end of doing this. Um, you don't have to. Um, we actually have prepared or are going to give you the fee schedule analysis tool that we literally use for our clients. Um, to, to analyze your, your UCRs and your PPO fee schedules. So what's really, really nice about this fee schedule ranking tool is it already has the automated formulas and calculations for you. So when you're putting in all the numbers, it's gonna highlight if the code is lower than what you currently have or what your UCR is, um, it's gonna highlight that for you so they stand out and you know, okay, I gotta fix that, I gotta increase that. Um, so it's just gonna be a very easy to use spreadsheet that um, is honestly a $499 value we're giving to you completely free. So um, let's recap what you're going to get with these awesome bonuses. So if you go schedule a free consultation with us and you have been on this webinar, um, not only on the consultation are you going to be able to get even more helpful information on your specific situation, you're going to get that PPO evaluation and ROI projection. We're going to give you that e-guide with the 35 common insurance problems at the $199 value. We're going to give you the PPO provider relations master list at that $299 value. And we're going to give you that PPO fee schedule analysis tool at that $499 value. So again, you're getting hours of safe time, which is priceless, higher PPO negotiation uh, or reimbursement rates. And is this is at a total value of $999 that you are getting completely free. So these are really, really awesome bonuses. Again, this is stuff we literally use for our clients um, that I think will really be a great resource for your practice. Um, so again, um, head on over, schedule a consultation, and uh, I'd, we'd love to continue this, this conversation with you. Um, that's pretty much everything I have for you today. I really appreciate all of your time. Um, I'm now going to open the floor up to some Q&A with the few minutes we have left here. So um, I see some questions in the box, but if anyone else has some, some additional questions, please right now put them in there and, and I'll get those answered. Thank you so much, Chloe. Yeah, so I just highlighted the have a question box on your screen. So let's just take a, a minute or two and see if any uh, more questions come in and then we'll get to those, okay? Okay, awesome. Okay, so I see a couple questions in here about the charges or how we how we are paid for this service. So um, in order to get the most accurate quote for our services, you do need to have a free consultation with us. Um, just because we do have a couple different services that vary um, in price based on your situation. So 
the goal of that consultation call, um, you know, we are going to be able to ask what PPOs you currently participate with, just, you know, if you've ever negotiated before, what your status is, get some good background on your practice. Um, and then that will be able to allow us to assess which of our services you're best suited for, as well as the associated pricing. So sorry, I can't give you that information now, but um, I just want to make sure you're getting the most accurate quote. So the best way to do that is to hop on a free consultation call. And, uh, and we're more than happy to do that for you. Thanks, Chloe. And I actually, there is a spot on everyone's screen that says complimentary consultation. So I just highlighted that. So if that is something that you want to take advantage of, just click on that link right on your consults on the right side. Um, and that'll get you to the Calendly where you can schedule that. Awesome. Okay. Thanks so much, Corinne, for pointing that out. Yeah. Yeah. The consult, like I said, it's completely free. And so, um, you know, we can just assess what your situation is and, and go from there of what your options are and everything like that. So that'll answer any questions you have. But if anyone else has any, any questions, drop them in the box. I, I'd love to answer. Yeah, we'll give it a few more minutes. I mean, you are very thorough. So let's see oh, <laughs> thank if we you get any it. questions. Yes, of Thanks. course. Um, I guess while we're kind of waiting, um, you know, I guess some common questions I do get that I can answer. Um, maybe this will get, get some ones going, I guess. Um, but um, back to Delta, because I know I said, you know, that's usually really a really common question that I'll get. And I know I already addressed that. So to kind of further elaborate, um, with Delta, I definitely recommend that you still reach out and attempt negotiations directly, OK? And then, like I said, the one thing you can sometimes look into that we'll check for our clients is if you're eligible to be a premier only provider versus the PPO and premier provider. So to kind of further elaborate on that, because I know a lot of offices aren't familiar, um, if you are a PPO and premier provider, what happens is when you treat a premier patient, you're going to get reimbursed on the premier fee schedule. However, if you treat a PPO and premier patient, this goes for general practitioners. If it's a PPO plus premier patient, they're going to default you to the PPO fee schedule, which is typically lower than the premier fee. Okay. Um, and if you're treating a regular PPO patient, you're of course going to get reimbursed on the PPO fee schedule as well. Now, if you're a specialist, you generally get paid on the premier fee schedule regardless. That's like their specialist fee schedule. Um, although sometimes Delta, I don't know why they do this, but they don't consider pediatric doctors or orthodontist specialists. So if you fall into that category, um, you're going to want to think of yourself as like a GP for the situation and the same, the same rules would apply. If you happen to be a, if you want to go the premier only route, what the benefit is, is again, typically the premier fees are going to be higher. Um, when you treat a premier patient, they're going to be covered. You're going to get that premier fee. When you verse the, when you treat the PPO plus premier patient, instead of defaulting to that lower PPO fee schedule, you will actually get reimbursed on the premier fee schedule as a premier only provider. Now, the one thing here is that when you treat the regular PPO patient, um, they will still get the PPO coverage. However, that patient will pay the difference you um, to your practice um, between the PPO and premier fee. So they're going to get the PPO coverage, but they pay that difference between the PPO and premier rate. So um, that's just, again, to give you a little bit of insight there of what we can look at for Delta, what you can look into. Um, for most states, you have to have been contracted for a certain amount of time. For the vast majority, it's going to be like 2016, 2017. There's a few states where it's like 2014. Um, but the vast majority, it's between the 2016 to 2017 range. And you can't have made any sort of changes to your contract. So you can't have moved locations or changed your tax ID number or then you, you won't be considered um, for it. So there are a few rare states that regardless of how long you've been contracted, they still do let you pick between the PPO and premier plans. So anyways, I just wanted to provide that information, hopefully as a little extra here, just because I know, again, that is a, a major insurance that I often get asked about and providers want to know what their options are there. Um, that, that's going to be your option is looking at those different plan levels. Thank you. I think that that was definitely helpful, Chloe. All right. Thanks, Corinne. 
Absolutely. All right. I, I think that kind of wraps up the Q&A session. I'm not seeing anything um, come through. Okay. Awesome. Yeah, I didn't see anything else. So again, anyone on here listening um, or that watches the replay, if you have any additional questions, please schedule a consultation with us um, and we can definitely answer any of your questions at that point in time. Perfect. Thank you again, Chloe, for the wonderful presentation this evening. And thank you all for joining. We did record tonight's webinar and we'll email the recording out sometime in the next week. We also would appreciate your feedback via our survey that will pop up on your screen shortly. Thank you all for joining us and we look forward to seeing you on future webinars. Thanks again, Chloe. Thanks, bye Corinne. Thanks everybody. Have a good evening.